This is Jimmy the Fontmeister and uh, I thought that today it was time for a little review on font vocabulary and terminology. So where we're going to start is with the M square. Now in order to talk about a lot of this uh, font terminology we have to go back to the old days of the printing press. And in those days they had a thing called a printing slug. A piece of lead with the uh, letter stamped into it, and you slid it down a channel here into a slot. And in between sentences, you had a plain lead slug to uh, to give you spacing between the uh, sentences. But it was all based uh, on a uh, the letter M. The letter M was uh, chosen as the most often the widest and tallest letter. So it just became uh, kind of some printer slang, the M square. Uh, we're going to just talk about it in Photographer as the workspace where you work on a font. You'll notice here that you have uh, the top of the font, that's called the A sender. The, the character stands on the baseline and under here we have the D sender. So the A sender is the tallest point in the font, the D sender is the smallest point. And so this this area here from the baseline down to the D sender on this particular font would be the letting. There's one other thing we need to talk about in the M square and it's called the M unit. So here here's how you look at this. You go to the element menu, font info, and you see that this M square here is a thousand M units. When you scale or print a font, the transformation is made from these relative M units to absolute units. The reason we, that we have to say it this way is because you can have various uh, resolutions on your monitor. Now, if you're thinking about what I just said and you're wanting to get some exact measurements, the way to do that is to create your own screen font and then it would have to be scaled precisely to the resolution of your monitor and there's also a formula that you can use to uh, create your fonts so that it will print at the exact resolution of your printer so that would be a special project so what we're doing today is just talking about some general font terminology let's see I thought what I'd do here is increase the A sender a little bit so that you can see what I mean by an A sender. Now I have a little more uh, room for my leading. Uh, so I have a little bit of leading uh, down below the character and above it. And just to show you the descender, I'm going to use the letter G. Another thing that you can notice. Uh, about for font terminology is notice that this G is not standing precisely on the baseline but it goes down just a little bit below that's called overshoot and the reason for overshoot is because uh, there's an optical illusion with our eyes that if we were to put this character on the baseline it would seem to be a little taller than the rest of the characters now over here I'm going to click on the guides in the layers palette and out of the baseline I'm going to pull out a guide. At the top of the lowercase letters we call this the X height. Let's go back and look at the, uh, the M. The top of the letter M is the cap height. Well, I gotta get back in the guide layer and when I choose guides and go to the baseline I can put a guide here for the cap height. Okay while we're in here looking at the letter M a little more font terminology. The legs here of the letter M are called the stems. If we look at a good character like the letter E, these are called cross crossbars. And let's take a look at a character that has serifs. We'll turn the preview off. And you'll see when we've got these little feet on the end of the stems, then we've got serifs. 
Now, the reason this is interesting is um, at some point we have to start talking about the uh, identifying features of the glyphs that make them all seem like they're all part of the same font. So you can see the uh, design features here that uh, these serifs all belong uh, on all the same characters. So to summarize, if a font has these feet on it, then it's a serif font. If it doesn't have these feet, then it's called a sans serif font, which I think is French for without serifs, sans serif. Now I know already you're going to forgive me for this. I thought in order to round out your font knowledge, I'd pick a round character. Sorry for that. Um, I wanted to illustrate what is called a counter. You'll notice I've selected this outer path. Maybe you didn't notice in Fontographer that there's a little arrow down in the bottom left corner that tells us that this path is clockwise. Now I'm going to select the inner path and now the little arrow is informing us that the path is counterclockwise. So the inner path is known as the counter. Moving on to some more font terminology, here we have the right hand side bearing, which is also known as the advanced cursor width. This is where the cursor comes to rest after you type the character. This is the left hand side bearing. And these things become important when you go to the metrics window here and take a look at another concept called kerning. Kerning is a relationship, uh, a special relationship between characters. So, for some of us, we may feel like this, uh, this lowercase a is a little too far away from the w, so we kern it and kind of nestle it under the wings of the w like this. The metrics window is a good place to also test your kerns and see if you like them. As far as your character spacing, a lot of uh, designers like to come in here and type various words just to uh, see how things are going. And you kind of get a feel for how your font's going to look. Another important concept for font terminology is to understand the difference between an outline and a bitmap. The outline vectors here uh, can be manipulated with the Bezier curve point handles. And what you do is you can play with them and shape the character any way you want. But when you're talking about bitmaps, you come up here to Window, Open Bitmap Window. And now, uh, in relation to the M square, we had talked about the the uh, variable unit called an M unit. Now, but in the bitmap world, this will be the screen font. And here, one pixel equals one point. So let's see how many points this bitmap is: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten, eleven, twelve. And there's a extra pixel for some uh, letting. So this will be a 12 point uh, bitmap. So here you have pixels equal points when you're in the bitmap world. And so when we're, when we're talking about bitmap again, we're not talking about a picture that came out of Photoshop or bitmap. We're talking about a bitmap font. So those are two different uh, pieces of terminology. Well, I'm thinking that's about it for your introduction to the basic vocabulary of typography. Uh, please refer to your manual for more details and uh, let us know if there's any other uh, details that you'd like to see covered in the Fontographer tutorial series.